So let's talk about what's going on at YouTube. And I've been waiting for this. Boy, I've really been waiting for this. You know, since we had the Twitter files. Yeah. Uh, I, I said, forget the Twitter files. Like, that was interesting enough. And there's still a lot we want to know about the Twitter files, Fauci, etc. I really want to see the Google files. I really want to see the YouTube files. Yeah. What I were also they? would like to see the Facebook files. The Facebook files, too. But, you know, because it hit us personally, right, we were blocked, I think, three or four times over a variety of subject matters here covering both the Ukraine war and what's going on with the Pfizer and, and, and vaccines and so forth. So we were blocked, banned, shut off, cut down a number of times. And that's just like the, that's just sort of the superficial stuff. I would really love to know how it influenced elections, mm -hmm. what they were doing to suppress voices, conservative voices. So, um, so, well, we have now the CEO of YouTube, Susan Wojcicki, announcing that she is stepping down suddenly. Yes. As the CEO of YouTube. And she says she's using this focus on my family. Of bit, course, of course. Uh, focus on my health and my personal projects which is super nice for her, but I do think she may have to testify before the House Judiciary Committee to comply with recent subpoenas about censorship and collaboration. Um, here is a statement from the House Judiciary Chairman Jim Jordan, who subpoenaed the executives of Alphabet, which includes Google and YouTube, uh, Amazon, Apple, Meta, and Microsoft for documents related to communications with the federal government's reported collusion with big tech to suppress free speech. Now they don't specifically give a reason. And like, it's funny. Cause I'm like, Oh, is this one about COVID or is, is this one about, you know, lockdowns or is this one about war censorship or like it, it literally could be about a number of things these days. Um, but they just want it all. Uh, he set a deadline of March 23rd for these companies to hand over documents related to various topics. Um, and they should know because we saw recently with testimonies from former Twitter employees that leaving a company does not get one off the hook. All four of these are former Twitter execs and they still had to testify uh, about their decisions. Now under what, how do we say her name again? You say Wajiki? I, I think it's Wajiki. Wuj Susan Wajiki. Wajiki, okay. yeah. Um, YouTube has been one of the strictest platforms for censorship. They prohibited creators from saying that the COVID vaccine does not prevent the spread of COVID, which is now irrefutable. In fact, here are some old rules for things that YouTube did not allow about COVID early, I'm gonna say these came out early 2021, late 2020. And then they changed those. Um, here are some newer rules, um, things that you cannot say now on YouTube. And you can see they removed- They totally flipped on it. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, they removed you know, claims about contracting the virus after vaccination uh, to say now that the vaccination does not guarantee a prevention of contracting the virus. Um, YouTube also, so, you know, we've been suspended for saying that very thing about how vaccinated people still can contract COVID. Um, and we had a two week um, ban. ban, meaning we couldn't use our channel. We couldn't comment on our channel. We couldn't let you know. Um, and then we were, we, we had the same punishment again because we had covered Pfizer's own uh, data about vaccinations we we you know just let you know what they had said that that wasn't we a violation their, of any of yeah. the rules that we just showed you um but we read their results and they did and they you know punished us for that we also have been punished for saying things that were negative about ukraine um, because youtube also prevents videos from saying that the army in ukraine fires on civilians which we know to be true and our show has been punished for saying those things regularly. They're going to see a flood of lawsuits. YouTube will over for First Amendment infringement. Um, I wonder well, can they, <laughs> yeah, it'd be interesting to see if they can pull that off or not. Yeah. Now, I, I found it laughable that in an article that I read, they're suggesting that it's potentially because of revenue loss due to Facebook and TikTok. Like Facebook, like Facebook is even going to potentially take views away from YouTube. Are you kidding me? Like that is for That's sure ridiculous. not the case. This has to be about you know, yeah, the, yeah. The she knows what's coming. Well, she's never given a satisfactory answer to 
why YouTube makes certain decisions. Why is it aligned with the Ukrainian war? Why is it aligned with um, even the more nefarious factions inside of the Ukrainian army? Why? Uh, why does it want war? Uh, maybe we'll get some of those out of the new CEO because she named YouTube's chief product officer, Neil Mohan, to replace her. Um, I don't know if we're going to, you know, get that much out of this guy because he's big on the, the misinformation word. Um, oh, you know how uncomfortable I am with that word. Last summer, he testified before Congress and attended a White House summit where he unveiled a new content moderation policy at YouTube. Here's his tweets about it. Um, now, he's using the you know idea of ex violent extremism like we're we're not going to allow that to happen on youtube and so we shared with the white house our policies to prohibit content glorifying violence or recruiting and fundraising for extremist groups um, even when the content isn't affiliated with designated terrorist organizations. So they're going to seek that out. We're also launching a media literacy campaign to help viewers, particularly younger ones, better identify different manipulation tactics to spread misinformation. So, you know, using that misinformation word in tandem with extremism shows you that like that gives them a license to reach pretty far and deep for what they don't like. Um, see the story we did Wednesday about pre-bunking videos and inoculations of ideas. So, you know, that gives me pause. Um, in his testimony to Congress, though, he said that openness is what he's committed to. YouTube really should be our commitment to openness works hand in hand with our responsibility to protect our community from harmful content. So cool. I want him to, you know, use that openness bit and tell us how they arrived at content rules around covidism around war around freedom of speech mm -hmm. so i'm listening yeah i would i to think see the this. war part makes sense because i think a lot of people forget that google is a war contractor like they do tracking and satellite systems for the military so they are a war contractor yeah at the end they, of the day so well and also a deep state contractor i mean they literally got them funding I mean, literal funding from from the intelligence state. Uh, for, I think it's from the CIA specifically. So, um, absolutely, these guys have funding and they're in place and they're they're part of that. They're yeah. part of that whole machine. So we'll see. We'll see what kind of buzzwords and things they start blocking now that she's out. But I can't wait for Jim Jordan because he's the one who's like, we're <laughs> these subpoenas are coming. We're going after big tech for censoring these conservative voices. We want to know what you guys were doing. And I'm glad we hopefully get some answers on that. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.